Here and Al Roberts. Welcome to Southeastern Championship Wrestling. Les, good to have you with us again. A lot of outstanding competition taking place in the Southeastern area. Exactly, Charlie, and I'm glad to be here once again. Of course, you're talking about great action. We're going to have it on the program today. We're going to see a newcomer from New York City. Uh, Big Iron Mike Masters has made quite an impression on me. Indeed, uh, I've uh, seen Mike uh, talk with him briefly before uh, today's television program. He's uh, quite a competitor from what I understand. Uh, his track record as far as uh, New York in other parts of the country concerned. We'll also be seeing in action uh, former Pittsburgh Steeler Charlie Cook. He'll be taking on the Mongolian Stomper. Then in tag team action, the Big C's, one and two against Plowboy Fraser and Joe LaDuc. Should be quite a competition there. A lot of action coming your way, not only here on television today, but in the arenas throughout the southeastern wrestling area. Let's go to the ring now for the introduction of our first event. The United States Junior Heavyweight title on the line as champion Jerry Stubbs defends against Ricky Gibson. These men separated in weight by four pounds, about a half an inch in height. Your official in this contest is Jimmy McGuire. And Stubbs attacks Gibson at the outset, crashing the belt down across his head. And Jerry Stubbs leaving nothing to chance as he opens up on his challenger. Stubbs, a very, very tough champion. No doubt about that, he's wearing the belt. But realizing that Gibson himself is a tough challenger and has held title, oh, high into the air with a backdrop, and Gibson stunned on that one. Both men can go scientifically hold for hold, counter for counter. But Stubbs has elected to open his offense with an assault of elbows and punches, and thus far, it has stood him in good stead. Stubbs with that headbutt, sending Gibson back to the canvas, and Gibson has not even had a chance to get into this match. Ricky has opened it on defense, and that's where he's staying at this point. Gibson needing a little breather here, and Stubbs realizing that he has a challenger on the go is staying right on top of Ricky Gibson. Gibson with a small package, and Stubbs is able to bail out. Jerry Stubbs bails out, moving in, wide open on Gibson. Gibson took the time to cradle him up and small package him, but was unable to retain the hole, and Stubbs bailed out. Stubbs with a nice forearm now. Going for the suplex. Stands Gibson high and dumps him. Jerry Stubbs with a beautiful suplex, but before any count is made, Gibson bails out. Ricky Gibson not to be counted out, but nonetheless, he has been stunned and he is hurt. No doubt about it. As Jerry Stubbs, the United States junior heavyweight champion, moves in to take full advantage of everything he can get here. I would have to say, had this match started even up in a neutral position, we would be seeing a fine wrestling contest, but Stubbs would not allow it to happen that way as he took advantage at the referee's instruction. Look at here. Gibson slides through, hooks his man, but couldn't hold him on the cradle, and Stubbs bails out. Gibson has still been slowed down, and Stubbs realizing he has time now. But Gibson right back at him. Possibly champion Stubbs is taking too much time. Too much time. Not trying to put his opponent away. Savoring the fact that he can punish him. And it has cost the champion on several moves. Forearms well placed by Stubbs. He shoots Gibson in. Gibson with a flying body block. And before the three count can be told, Jerry Stubbs bails out. An elbow by Stubbs. Staggers Gibson. Gibson finds the ropes, and he'll get the break. Your commentator was looking for a fine wrestling match here, but I have been disappointed by the champion. Gibson comes off that second turnbuckle with a trying for a diving press, but Stubbs moves out of the way, and Gibson knocks the wind out of himself as he lands. But Ricky will not allow those shoulders to stay down to the count. A tenacious Ricky Gibson is hanging tough in this match. Gibson with a backslide. 
and Stubbs is out of that one. Gibson has been weakened to the point that he cannot control Stubbs on his tries for a pin on three, four occasions now. He has been able to get a two count, but Stubbs has been able to bail out. Body slam by the champion is Jerry Stubbs. Moves into the corner, and he will go to the second rope legally. Goes to the elbow and misses. Gibson moving out of the way. And Jerry Stubbs has hurt himself. Stubbs down. Gibson stunned. Both men have been stunned, and neither man 100% at this point in the contest. A beautiful knee by Gibson now as a challenger. Makes a valiant effort to battle back. One count as Stubbs is able to get out once again. Gibson favoring his back. Shoots Stubbs in, goes for the drop kick and misses. Rick coming down on the back of his head is stunned himself, but he's able to bail out. And again, a two count. In a matter of a couple minutes here, we have seen eight or nine tries for a pin by both contestants. Neither man being able to hang on. And the referee caught in the middle and knocked down. Referee Jimmy McGuire caught as Stubbs came off the rope. Gibson just standing up and McGuire was stunned. Over the top rope by Jerry Stubbs as he pitches Ricky Gibson out. Had McGuire been on his feet, the referee certainly would have disqualified Jerry Stubbs on this particular rule infraction. Certainly that moves an immediate disqualification. But the referee, unable to see the action, can only start to count. Gibson back in, Stubbs into a rolling body scissor, trying to pin his man, and has the rope, and gets the three count. With a rolling scissor and a body press, the referee awards the belt to Jerry Stubbs, the winner and still champion. November to Huntsville and to Florence, Alabama. But let's talk once again about Thursday night, November the 13th. The Boutwell Auditorium in Birmingham, Alabama, where the National Wrestling Alliance has sanctioned a one-night tournament to crown an Alabama State Heavyweight Wrestling Champion. With me right now, the Tennessee stud, the man who considers himself the uncrowned heavyweight champion of the world, Ron Fuller. And Ron, a, lot, a great array of talent in that tournament on the 13th, and you're among them. That's exactly right. I'm not among them. I'm at the very top of the heap, you know. Let me say, first of all, you mentioned Huntsville, Alabama. That's correct. And, and Flo Florence, Alabama. Is that a girl, Florence? No, that's a town. And oh, there that's... are a great deal of wrestling, great <laughs> many it. wrestling fans in that area. Oh, well, never mind. I'm not coming to those towns, I'll tell you that. I'm coming to one place only, Birmingham. And that's on Thursday night, November the 13th, when all you people out there in television land, that's right, you grandpa and grandma and all the little kids, drag them back from the TV so you can get a good look at a real man. I'm going to be in your city, live and in living color. You're going to have the opportunity to see the greatest wrestler that has ever lived, and certainly the greatest that has ever come to the state of Alabama, the Ron Fuller, the Tennessee Stud. Don't forget that name. And you mentioned there's going to be a lot of people in the tournament. Well, I hope so, because I love competition. I love to whip people. Let's and talk I about a little bit of your competition. Let's talk about Bob Armstrong. I guess you thought I was Joe true. Duke. No, I, I love think whipping think. people. All right. But let's talk about Bob Armstrong, Joe LaDuke, uh, uh, the Mongolian Stomper, a great array of wrestling them. talent has been entered into this in tournament. I'm not interested in talking about them. All I'm interested in, Les Thatcher, is getting in the ring and showing all these people in Alabama what class looks like when it steps through the ropes. And that's exactly what you're going to be looking at is absolute class from the top of my six foot nine inch head right down to my beautiful toes i'm gonna be showing you people what wrestling is all about and i know that all of you every one of you sitting out there in television land none of you have ever seen a wrestler that can compare 
with this man right here. I've won every title in the South, and that's the reason I'm in Birmingham, is to add one more. I got the Florida title hanging in my closet. I don't even show it, because it's rinky-dink. I got the Georgia title hanging in my closet. It's rinky-dink, too. But they tell me this is going to be a nice belt. They tell me that this is going to be a prestigious title. Yes, it is. And when prestige and money and class is involved, you can bank on one man being right in the middle of it. And ladies and gentlemen, you're looking at him now. Tuesday night, October 7th, was certainly a night of champions in Mobile, Alabama's Municipal Auditorium, and uh, two brand new champions are standing with me now, Robert Fuller and Joe LaDuke. A big night for you gentlemen in gaining those Southeastern Tag Titles. That's right. As you know, that was an uh, awful big program there with several title matches involved, and we were real proud to be on such a large crowd of people to see uh, Joe and I win those titles. It was a great night for us, and we just hope we're going to be able to hold them and meet a lot of the great competition in the southeastern area and remain the champions. Joe, you got a good partner and co-champion. Well, I tell you what, Charlie, it's it's good to be champion, and I'm glad to be champion with Robert. And um, we train together, and we travel together, and I guess we got everything. Uh, we, we, how do you say that in English? Everything you got together. You go, we got everything together. I notice uh, on some uh, upcoming contracts in the southeastern wrestling area that uh, you two gentlemen are going to be uh, fighting champions because you will uh, shortly be defending those titles. That's right. We're, we're going to defend the titles as much as possible, and we know that people like to see champions go ahead and put up the title as much as possible, and we feel like we're going to be a good team. We're going to be good champions. We plan on holding these belts a long time, and, and we plan on just meeting any team that comes along and says they want a shot at them. Uh, if they're capable and if they've got the background, you know, we don't plan on just uh, squandering around with a lot of underneath people. We want good, hard talent to come up against us, and we're going to take them and put them down. Right, Joe? Well, that includes peanut butter and marmalade and jelly and uh, whatever else you want to call it. But peanut butter, you just come on in and try to get the belts back, and I know you can't. I don't know if it was uh, deliberately done or what, but there has been some damage done to those tag titles and uh, the belts. And when you gentlemen obtained them, they're out yeah. uh, being reworked at That's this right. time. That's I wish you could have them. have them. We don't have them here. Next time you see us, we'll have them. Ten minute time limit introducing in the corner to my left at 215 pounds from Dothan, Alabama, Charles Odom. Odom. His opponent. At 240 pounds from New York, New York, Mike Masters. Mike Masters. And so today on Southeastern Championship Wrestling, Les Thatcher, we take our first look at Iron Mike Masters from New York. Yes, we do, Charlie. And uh, several months ago, I was in the New York area and happened to get a chance to uh, watch uh, Mike Masters in the ring against a couple different opponents, and uh, I was impressed. Uh, the young man uh, has only been at the pro game a couple of years, but he's learned fast, and uh, I think uh, this will give Charles Odom certainly a test in there today. Andy grips again, and it's Odom being thrown into that turnbuckle for the second time. Watch the power of Mike Masters because this is a strong suit. Masters backing off a bit now. Uh, Charles Odom with a couple of nice arm drag takedowns, but uh, Masters not to be taken lightly. And of course, if uh, Charles thinks that uh, this is a whole ball game right there, I think yeah, he's going to have to think differently. Is throwing a hip-in takedown. Nice move. Masters will cut the corners. He'll uh, go to the back alley brawling style if need be. Good head scissors by Mike Masters on Charles Odom. Odom looking for some means of escape in this situation. Masters with a lot of power in the upper body as well as in the legs, and uh, this is going to stand him in good stead against the tough competition in the area. Collar and elbow once again, jockeying for position now. Odom with a nice switch in and go behind. Waist lock takedown. Trying for the hook. Masters on the move. Odom with a good ride here, Charlie. Very good. And both men in a standing position after those series of moves. Mike Masters looks uh, like to me, Les, he's really stalking his opponent trying to figure this man out from behind with the ride. 
Nice cradle and takedown. Into the ropes and referee Jimmy McGuire calls for the break. You know, there's one thing about professional wrestling, Charlie. You meet so many different opponents around the country. It's hard to uh, scout every one of them. And when you step into the ring as the man for the first time, you have to be a little hesitant. You have to feel your opponent out. Many times the fans will say, well, this man is uh, leery, he's afraid. But that's not the case. You've got to check this man out. See how his moves go. Check his timing, his speed, and so forth. And I think this is what Mike Masters have been doing thus far. Does the wrong move... Uh could end up in a uh, bad situation for you. Uh, you could be pinned. It only takes one move to beat you, Charlie, that's and that's what Masters is trying to put in. Those hammer-like blows across the back of the shoulders of Charles Odom, and Masters takes him high for the slam. It's Masters with a hard right. The back of the head dropping that elbow in there again. Masters on a little uh, verbal confrontation with the fans at ringside, but uh, of course his main concern is Charles Odom, and right now Masters is dominating the offense. Odom dazed in the corner. Back in collar and elbow center of the ring. It's on the ropes again. Arm whips his man in. Drop by Charles Odom. Now back on offense. Full body slam on the man from New York. With the uh, size differential here and the experience, Odom has certainly given a good account. Oh. Good drop kick right in the pit of the stomach. And it's Odom going again. Masters holding on to that rope, coming off, dropping the elbow. Breaker. This is one of the various forms, and Mike Masters using it here. Let's see if he's going to get the submission from Charles Odom. Yes, he does, Charlie, and it's Mike Masters with a backbreaker and a submission with a big win over Charles Odom. More action to come on Southeastern Championship Wrestling. Our personality profile is next. The National Wrestling Alliance sanctioning a one-night tournament to determine an Alabama heavyweight champion. And one of the gentlemen entered in that tournament is with me on personality profile today, the Tennessee stud, Ron Fuller. And Ron, of course, uh, in recent weeks, the fans in, uh, in and around the Birmingham area have become uh, a bit acquainted with you as a professional wrestler. And uh, we've discussed uh, many of your victories, many of your regional titles around the country. And, of course, I've followed your career throughout my uh, time as a wrestler and as a commentator. And certainly uh, I know that you're happy to blow your own horn, but I've got to say that I know that you are a top caliber wrestler. Well, you know, you said that the people had, had begun to take notice of me in Birmingham. It's actually a little more than that, Les Thatcher. It's the people in Birmingham and in Alabama have become thrilled, thrilled with the idea of being able to see real wrestling talent in the ring. You know, I, uh, this part of the country has for so long been dominated by so-called wrestlers, by rinky-dink, uh, guys that are fat, guys that are skinny, guys that are out of shape, guys that have no experience, guys that didn't wrestle amateurs and, and have had very few professional matches, and those that they did have were against low class, no competition. What they're about to see in this part of the country is the greatest wrestling that they have ever seen because I know that there's several men that have already signed for this big Alabama tournament that's coming up for the Alabama Heavyweight Championship that are great competitors in their own right, that have won championship matches. All of these guys are good wrestlers, Les Thatcher, but there's one wrestler here now that's great, that's great, that has won every regional championship in the southern United States and several of them outside the southern United States. The Missouri title, the Australian heavyweight champion, the Japanese. I'm one of the only Americans ever to win a Japanese championship. And, uh, you know, you've got films here today. I'm going to take part of this program today. You know, I know we had scheduled films of yes, me yes. beating Tojo Yamamoto and, and Jerry Lawler and all oh, just several different people that maybe these people around Birmingham might remember, you know, because I've beaten all of them time after time after time. And, uh, 
You know, actually, for you people out there in television land, you're looking at what should be and what certainly will be the man that will win the World Heavyweight Championship from Harley Race, your next World Heavyweight Champion. Well, if I, if my, I may interrupt just a moment. Uh, we have you may. Uh, seen films of you uh, winning the Florida Heavyweight title from Buddy Cold. And as you, you're talking about Harley Race, the World Champion, what we might mention to the fans is if my memory serves me correctly, you have wrestled four different world champions and you feel that you are the uncrowned world champion. I've wrestled four different world champions and beaten all of them at one time or another. Several times I've beaten them in non-title matches and a couple of times I've beaten them in championship matches. And, you know, I'm a, I'm a very outgoing person, you know, Les yes, Thatcher, uh, uh, not well liked by some individuals. Some promoters think that I may be a little bit cocky or something. I don't understand it sometimes. But that's the reason that I am not the world champion now. They've been able to finagle things around and take that championship belt away from me even after I'd won it in championship matches. But it's just a matter of time, Les Thatcher until I eventually get that belt around my waist, and then I won't be vying for regional titles anymore. Then I'll be wrestling all over the world where I should be right this minute. Well, you did mention and, that, we had a, that we had a film. Yeah, but I'm not interested. I'm, I'm talking, if you don't mind. I want to tell these people about the reason that, you know, in these films that I have here, I have films of me beating practically every talent in the United States and throughout the world. Because I have beaten all these people, it's a fact that you know Les Thatcher, and it's a fact that I'm very proud of because I work out all the time and I train all the time. I'm from a family that has 14 wrestlers in it. All of them are losers, except for me, because I'm the only one with the proper attitude. Let me interrupt you just a moment once again, if you don't mind. You mentioned a family of 14 wrestlers, and of course, uh, this is something that uh, you and I have been able, unable to discuss in recent weeks, and I'm curious as to why. But you have a younger brother who is certainly a top flight uh, professional wrestler in his own right. I have a younger brother, but I prefer not to talk about it. This profile is about me, is it not? I prefer not on. to talk Go about right. it. I want these people to understand that this isn't my younger brother and this isn't all the other people that's wrestled in my family. This is the king. This is the greatest. This is the man that will be your next Alabama heavyweight champion and your next world's heavyweight champion. Well, Ron, uh, we've talked about the film. You have uh, kept interrupting and wanting to talk about something else, talk about yourself, which is fine. That's what you're on profile for. But if you've noticed, we have another chair on the set today. Yeah, I think this, and, is, this is your life, right? Uh, You're going to bring like out that. some of the people that I've beaten in the past. That's no, a great no, idea, no, really. It's it a great be, idea. It could be like this idea. is your life that. because uh, the gentleman I'd like to invite out now has entered the one-night tournament for the Alabama State Heavyweight title, and he's a gentleman that uh, you know rather well. I know him well myself, but I would say next to his father, you probably know him better than anyone, and that's your brother, Robert. Robert, would you uh, join us on the set uh, for personality profile? Robert Fuller, ladies and gentlemen, the younger brother of Ron Fuller, the Tennessee stud. Back to what, see, what, are you, what are you doing here? Well, he's in the Alabama State Heavyweight Championship when? Tournament. Uh, his entry is just... Uh, You're in Oklahoma, man. What are you doing out here? No, I'm right here, and I'm going to be wrestling in the tournament just like you are. I've wrestled in this area more than you have. The people out there know me a lot better, and it's probably a good thing because you've been sitting out here doing a lot of mouthing off and talking about yourself when there's a big tournament and a lot of people involved in it, and I'm going to be one of them, brother. Well, let me just explain something. This is completely, you got no business, first of all, bringing somebody out here. I'm not prepared to sit here and talk with him. Secondly, if my brother is going to be wrestling, if he's going to be wrestling in the well, southeastern United States, then I'm not going to be wrestling here myself. Don Curtis can tear up my contract. And Good you news. people in this part of the country won't be seeing Good me news. anymore. You won't be seeing the stud anymore. Uh, I'm finished. Good news. It's your prerogative. Uh, Ron I don't think left anybody missed his films in the first place. Robert, uh, I can't get an answer out of your brother, but I've known the family uh, as a wrestler and as a commentator for some 20 years, and I know your father has trained you both, uh, taught you both values, uh, how to be a good sport, how Betty to be has. an athlete, and he's taught you to wrestle as a unit, yet uh, as the fans can very well see here on their own, there is a lot of disharmony between Ron and Robert Fuller. Would you like to explain that if you Well, I, I can't really explain all of it because it goes pretty deep and it goes very, very personal between Ron and myself. But I can just tell you about things back years ago with my brother and I growing up. My brother's 6'9", I'm 6'4", myself, but when you're looking up, 
five inches up and you're looking up into his nasty looking face out in the field when you're working 90 degree weather or something and having your arguments like we did growing up, then, uh, then you know exactly right there uh, how, how the people must feel and listening to his mouth and listen to him sit out here and talk about how wonderful he is. That's our basic problem that all my life I've sat around when I listen to Ron talk, I listen to him talk about how wonderful he was. See, and I grew up with Ron, so I ought to know better than anybody else how wonderful he is. And I can tell you, Ron, because you're out, you might as well be listening to me as just sitting and walking off or going someplace else, son. You're going to have to wrestle in this area and look at me. You're going to have to tolerate it because I'm going to be here. This brings up a question. You've answered part of it. Uh, but uh, your brother is, uh, says he will not wrestle in the tournament if you do. I know you don't plan to step down. Uh, what do you think is going to happen for me? Well, I don't care whether he wrestles in the tournament or not. I don't think the people of Alabama care. I'm going to be here, and I don't care if he is or not. Well, our profiles turn out to be on Ron Robert Fuller, and that's it for today. Introducing in the corner of my left at 256 pounds from Cleveland, Ohio, Charlie Cook. Charlie Cook. His opponent at 275 pounds from Yulin Bader out of Mongolia, managed by the Big C, the Mongolian Stomper. The man referred to by his manager as the eighth wonder of the world, the Mongolian Stomper, taking on Charlie Cook. Charlie, we've got a main event any place in the country right here. Former Pittsburgh Steeler Charlie Cook against the Mongolian Stomper. We've got action. Charlie Cook. Watching the kick goes to work on the Stomper. Blocked by Cook, in again, Stomper hits the canvas and out of the ring. Stomper finds the back door and uh, out to talk with his manager, the Big C. Thought he was having things his own way as he opened on Charlie Cook. But Cook reversing the tables immediately and uh, now it's just Stomper on defense. Charlie Cook, in again on top of the Stomper. Good connections, one to the back of the head. Sweeps that leg. Beautiful move by Cook. He's working on that left leg of the Mongolian stomper. Charlie Cook controlling the flow of action right now, but the stomper looking for a handle, some way to escape or reverse this situation. And of course, uh, his trump card, the big C, is manager in the corner, Charlie. Indeed, uh, looking over the situation, Charlie Cook's series of headbutts to that leg. Cook cranking on that leg, applying the pressure now. The stopper bailing out, uh, tearing at the eyes of Charlie. Cook in low with a good sweeping single leg takedown and right back in command. The stopper's going to have to take Cook's speed away here to control the offense, Charlie. Charlie Cook still with the advantage in this match. And left leg of the stopper. But it's the stomper once again, pulling the hair, raking across the eyes. And this man will do anything. Stomper now, moving in, stalking his opponent. And the kick with the big boots. And of course, this is a major weapon of the Mongolians. And that's the wrong move right there. Charlie Cook battles back and goes to work, returning to that left leg once again. Keep an eye on, out for that drop kick of Charlie Cook. One of the most devastating I've seen in 20 years around the sport, Charlie. This man's a tough one, and he's got an equally tough opponent. Cook still on the offense to that left leg of the Mongolian stomper. I'm sure the big C is not too happy with his game plan thus far. Sending the stomper out there to open up early it didn't pan out, and Cook has battled back from every deficit uh, to control the offense thus far. You'll notice the stopper with the hands over the years, our capacity crowd here at the tele television sports arena, of course, backing Charlie Cook in this match, and it's uh, known for a fact that the stopper is very sensitive to noises in that ring, Les. This is something that I believe everyone's aware of, and uh, the fans, of course, like to stay on him verbally. Cook with that uh, form of Indian deathlock now, but the stomper, very powerful man. Take a lot to get him to submit, but Charlie Cook certainly in the driver's seat. 
the big C complaining to uh, referee Jimmy McGuire at this point. Uh, anything for a distraction, he's getting in here. Look here. As the big C draws the attention of the referee, a stomper goes to the eyes once again to break the hole. Side headlock by the stomper, putting what appeared to be a thumb into the throat of Charlie Cook. And as you brought out earlier, main eventer anywhere in the country, Les. Two top caliber athletes. Stomper takes his man in, comes off with that boot. Stomper trying to set his man up to put him away. Now let's see how he's going to go with it. Working on the arm now of Charlie Cook. And the Mongolians back on the offensive side of the ledger once again. And uh, again, distracted. The referee was a big C, and the Stomper taking advantage takes Cook to the canvas. good even battle thus far Charlie both men have uh, fared well it's uh, been give and take I don't know how you go if you had to give it on points there we see the big C again distracting the referee something uh, he is well known for this has been a uh, great deal of the game plan I think thus far in the match uh, the big C on three or four occasions has helped the stopper maintain or gain control he still got control of that left arm. And again, the big C. There we see Stomper taking advantage of the situation, but Jimmy McGuire sees it, and he's calling for a break. The referee caught it. He called for the break in that particular situation. Stomper staying right on top of his opponent. Headbutt by Charlie Cook to the midsection. Doubles the Mongolian up. Cook with a kick. Down goes the stomper. Charlie Cook right back in the middle of this one. As the stomper rakes at the eye. Both opponents down. Charlie Cook out on the floor. He caught him coming off of that rope. The big C involving himself here again. And it's the big C catching a hard right from Cook out on the floor. Stomper. Kicking away at Cook as he tries to come in the ring. Both men out on the floor. Eight count on the floor. Ten count. It looks, it appears both men have been counted out. All right, decision of the referee. Both men counted out on the floor. The winner, there is no winner in this match. They're we'll be in the pound on Charlie Cook now. We'll, we'll be right back. Uh, wrestling fans, Southeastern Wrestling will be coming your way in the month of November. And on Thursday, November the 13th, at the Boutwell Auditorium in Birmingham, a big one-night tournament to crown the Alabama State Heavyweight Wrestling Champion. With me right now, a gentleman who's the United States Junior Heavyweight Champion, Jerry Stubbs. Jerry, we were discussing before we started this interview that years ago, Archie Moore tried to win the World Heavyweight title in two divisions, and you're setting out to do basically the same thing since you've entered this uh, tournament on November the 13th. Moore was unsuccessful, but I know you're planning on being a success at it. Well, you know, Les, I do a lot of training. You can look at my body and tell that. But nevertheless, if I go to Montgomery, you know, this United States junior belt right here. I'm, I'm at a borderline case. I'm at 220, 225. I can go either way. You know, I've wrestled people 300 pounds, and I've been victorious. So if I go to Birmingham, no matter who I wrestle, whether they got me outweighed, I know they're not going to look better than me, but if they got me outweighed, you can bet that I'm going to come out on top. And just like you said, I'm going to get both belts. I'm going to be the world champion all the way around. There's no, you know, nobody can dispute my word because I'm going to be there in Birmingham. Birmingham. Jerry, a lot of tough competition. Robert Fuller, Joe LaDuke, Bob Armstrong is signed for this tournament. Ron Fuller, uh, every name that we mentioned has held a regional uh, or area title someplace in their career. And, of course, stamina and endurance are going to be a big part of this tournament on the 13th. Well, that's true, Les. You know, if you hadn't been a champion or if you're not championship material, you wouldn't be entering the contest. Because, look, I'm championship material. Robert Fuller, Ron Fuller, it don't matter who it is. Bob Armstrong, if you wasn't a champion, you wouldn't be there trying to get a championship belt. And I'm going to be there, and I'm going to take the championship belt. Some of the top flight wrestlers from around the world will be vying in a one-night tournament on November the 13th, Thursday night, the Boutwell Auditorium in Birmingham, 
to crown the new Alabama state heavyweight champion, me. Your attention, please. Our next match, one fall, tag team match, TV time remaining. In one corner, at a combined weight of 769 pounds, Stan Plowboy Frazier and Joe LaDuke. Frazier and LaDuke. Their opponents at a combined weight of 512 pounds, Big C's one and two. It's the Big C's one and two taking on two big men, Joe LaDuke and Plowboy Frazier, Les. Uh, no doubt who's got the weight advantage here is there LaDuke the Lumberjack and the Plowboy. Stan Frazier out against the Big C's one and two, number two. And Plowboy Frazier, and I'm sure Frazier would like to have number one in that ring with him. Indeed. Uh, collar and elbow center of the ring, and it's Frazier once again pushing his man away over in the ropes. 485 pounds. You know, you're, how does a man go in and defense against the size that they're encountering here with LaDuke and with Fraser. There is uh, no way unless there is uh, double teaming tactics used in a match like this. Good takedown by Stan Fraser. Fraser back up and at him. Moving at 485 pounds around with some authority. Into the brick wall he goes. Big C number two. Looking for some means of a takedown in this case, but thus far he can't find it into that bear hug. Now Big C one coming in. Frustrating time for the C's. They've got to try and control Fraser, and they're unable to do it thus far. And Fraser goes to work on number one. Joe LaDuke has number two on the outside, throws him back in. You know, in my wrestling career, I never had to encounter a man the size of Fraser. I'm not sure how I'd handle it if I did, Charlie, uh, except maybe to find a nice fortress, crawl in it, and hope for the best. That would be good way out of that situation. Side headlock by the big C number one on the big man over in the corner. And a hard right from LeDuke. To the side of the head, LeDuke is tagged. He's in the ring against big C number one, hard right. You know, when I look at tag teams, I try and uh, divide them. One side to be power, one side to be speed. With LeDuke and Frazier, you've got to give the speed to LeDuke. Indeed, uh, Joe LaDuke for his size, 284 pounds, extremely quick, and uh, he can move around that ring like 150 pounds or less. With a team like this, uh, certainly power is their forte, and uh, I think the C's, number one and two, are finding it out in a big hurry. In control now, the masked men are opening up for the very first time now, Charlie. Taking the wind out of the big schooner's sails, and that's what it's going to take to uh, slow this man down. <laughs> Referee Jimmy McGuire with his hands full as the masked men switching in and out. Uh, the feverish pace. Plowboy Frazier uh, jumping. C number two trying to make it to Joe LaDuke. LaDuke with that outstretched hand, and although it's just a matter of a few feet, it might as well be a mile if you can't make that tag, Charlie. Tag is made with Big C number one. And tag is made with LaDuke. LaDuke in. Using that elbow, hard right. And he catches Big C two coming in the ring. LaDuke having to fight two men. The lumberjack blast away with a drop kick. When you move that kind of weight through the air with that kind of speed, its connection has got to be something else. He's going for the mask, Les. Going for the mask of Big C number one. And Frazier in, all four men in the ring now. LaDuke being hurtled over that top rope. 
I don't know if the referee can see that particular move. That should have been his qualification there, Charlie. Automatically. Now they're tying up Frazier. Both men working on Plowboy Frazier. LaDuke making his way back into the ring. LaDuke, hard right to the big C number one. And once again, he's going for the mask. This match is being stopped. This match is being stopped by the referee, I believe. Hey, look at this. He's got the mask off. No doubt, the man who uh, says he's such close friends with Don Carson is none other than Don Carson. There we see Don Carson in the ring. That mask has been taken off. Counting away at Joe LaDuke, Frazier tied up in the ropes, and let's see what's going to happen here. The match, Charlie, technically and officially over, but Don Carson and the Big C and Big C number two still counting away at Joe LaDuke. They have lacerated him. A gash has been opened on Joe LaDuke and the Big C's, uh, one being Don Carson continuing to pound away with that glove. This situation out of control. This situation out of control. Robert Fuller coming in now. Robert Fuller comes in. Boom! And a hard right. They're out of the ring. I don't know who. The winners will be LaDuke and Frazier. And we'll be back in just a moment that Southeastern Wrestling will be coming your way through the month of November. And now a special announcement for you Birmingham fans. The one-night tournament for the Alabama State Championship as sponsored and sanctioned by the National Wrestling Alliance has been moved to Thursday, November the 13th. That's in Birmingham's Boutwell Auditorium. The date has been set back because of the overwhelming amount of entries from around the country for this uh, first time ever Alabama State Championship. Two of those entries are with me right now. These gentlemen are currently the Southeastern Tag Team Champions, but Joe LaDuke here on my right and his partner and co-champion on my left, Robert Fuller, will be in that one-night tournament on November the 13th. And Robert, uh, it's going to be singles action right down the line on the 13th. That's right, singles action. Although we do hold the titles uh, as a partnership, we're going to have to go into this thing one man for all, and uh, that's the way it's going to wind up. I'd like to say that it's going to be a big night for me to return to Birmingham. I haven't been there for some time, and uh, I say some time, it makes me seem like an older fella <laughs> because it's, uh, I think it was about 1974 since I've wrestled down there. But uh, it, I'm looking forward to going back. I got a lot of friends there, and I'm certainly looking forward to having a chance to become the Alabama heavyweight champion. There's so many people right now that want that title and want to get it mixed up in this uh, Alabama heavyweight situation that uh, it's going to be a real honor to not only wrestle against all of those people in the tournament, but to have an opportunity to win it. Robert, I know you'll be geared for go on that night. And Joe, of course, uh, there is a chance that uh, you may be facing your partner before the evening is over on the 13th because, as we said, it's single action and both of you are geared to go after that uh, big uh, belt that's going to be for the Alabama State Champion. That's right, Les. Uh, you know me for about five years and uh, every time uh, you had the chance or the, the unluck to watch me wrestle in the, everywhere in the country, uh, you know I don't uh, give any points and I don't give any chance to my opponent. I go in the ring and I go there to win. That's what I'm paid for and that's why I'm a winner. And I come from Canada. And I've never been in Birmingham, Alabama. I've never been in Huntsville, Alabama. And it's a real honor to me to be able to go in Birmingham and, and visit the beautiful state of Alabama. But in the tournament, uh, I, I understand that Robert and I are the champion of the southeastern area. And if by uh, any, not, I, would, I couldn't say chance, if we have to wrestle one another, uh, we're the champion uh, in the southeastern area, but if we have to wrestle one another, Robert, uh, I'm sorry, I, we're going to have to fight it off. Well, that's, that's understood. That's an understood point. Right now, we're the champions, like you said. We're coming to Birmingham, uh, not as the tag champions, but as singles to go in this tournament, and it's going to be an exciting night of wrestling. Les. November the 13th, Thursday night, in Birmingham for the one-night tournament for the Alabama heavyweight title. Yeah.
And uh, Les Thatcher, we have seen quite a bit of action today on the Southeastern Championship Wrestling on our television matches, plus uh, a lot of things taking place upcoming in the arenas. That's right, Charlie. Action personified, no doubt about it, on today's program. You know, I think we ought to remind the fans that coming up, we're going to have on the air, not one, not two, but three world champions right here on the program, as you're going to be talking to uh, Harley Race, the world heavyweight title holder, the fabulous Moolah, the ladies' world champion, and Les Thornton, uh, the junior heavyweight champion of the world. And I think right there uh, speaks highly of uh, Don Curtis, who's been searching the world uh, for top wrestling talent. We've got the three major uh, world title holders right here with us, I believe, next week on the program. Exactly right. And bringing up uh, the world's junior heavyweight championship, uh, first chance I've had to really talk to you in the atmosphere of on on camera as far as your commentary is concerned uh you are a former pro wrestler and you at one time held the world's junior heavyweight championship was contender charlie i wish i'd have excuse, excuse me charlie uh les i just got word in the back that um it's kind of a mysterious as a phone call but uh word is that ron bass may be coming back into the area uh, you know, he was injured uh, in a while ago uh, by Joe LaDuke, and evidently his injuries are uh, healing pretty well. We know he's not supposed to be back here for uh, quite a while yet, but evidently, according to this phone call, and I don't, it's very mysterious, he is uh, planning on coming back. So, uh, what do we make of that? I don't know. The big man from Texas, Ron Bass, uh, injured some six weeks ago in uh, Expo Hall in Mobile, Alabama, suffered a shoulder separation in a Canadian lumberjack match with Joe LaDuke. And I'm, uh, I know you're familiar with the situation because there were uh, a lot of disputes in that situation on contracts with Mr. Curtis, and uh, right. you were very close to that situation. So word is possibly the return very soon of... Uh, Ron Bass. That Certainly. makes things interesting. Yes, it does. I think that'll change the complexion of competition in the area somewhat. Ron Bass, a very tough, aggressive athlete, and again, a former regional and area champion uh, throughout his career. So I would say along with the top flight wrestling talent already here, world's champions from three different divisions coming into the area, it all spoils uh, top flight action for the fans. On today's program, we saw an impressive win by a man from New York. Uh, his first appearance here in the Southeastern Wrestling Area on television, Mike Masters. He defeated Charles Odom uh, with a submission hold, that uh, variation of a backbreaker. Yes, uh, Masters, uh, as I mentioned, I'd seen him wrestle in the New York area uh, a couple months ago. And this young man has come a long way in just two years as a pro athlete. And uh, I think he's going, again, going to change the complexion of things here. He's going to be a man to be contended with. He has all the power, as you saw today, Charlie, uh, in the upper body along with the legs, and I think uh, Mike Masters uh, is going to have to be reckoned with on, on a regional basis with the Southeastern title, the Southeastern Tag Team Championship, or what have you, because this is a young man that uh, is uh, really moving right along, has scored some big wins in the eastern part of the United States, and I believe he'll score some big wins here in Southeastern Wrestling. The Big C, uh, through all of his scheming on today's program, uh, he was involved in two matches today on uh, Southeastern Championship Wrestling. Uh, the Mongolian Stomper, his eighth wonder of the world but against Charlie Cook and we had a double count out on the floor so uh, he could not be considered victorious in uh, that situation and in that last match uh, disqualification on the part of the Big C's one and two your winners were Stan Frazier and Joe LaDuke a lot I think the, the major thing, too, is uh, Joe LaDuke left that ring with that mask, Charlie. And, uh, of course, uh, now this is a different complexion. I have uh, met one-on-one -on -one in wrestling rings uh, in the southeastern United States myself over several years ago, Don Carson. And he's a scheming, conniving, but a successful manager and professional wrestler. And so I, I think there's no doubt about where the success of the stomper or anyone that uh, the big C or Don Carson, whatever you care to call him, uh, comes from now. In the coming weeks, three world champions, the fabulous Mula Les Thornton, the world junior heavyweight champion, and the NWA world heavyweight champion Harley Race coming to our Southeastern Television uh, Wrestling Program. Also, we'd like to remind you that the Ringsider is on sale throughout the arenas in the Southeastern Wrestling Area. In the closing moments, thank you Earl Tyson, Neil Riddle, our directors Ricky Harper, and Wayne Register. For Al Roberts, Les Thatcher, I'm Charlie Platt saying we hope to see you next week right here on Southeastern Championship Wrestling.